gas fitter exam cram session video 21 okay the magic number here main number you got to remember 42 inches to the handrail I got this question I remember it clear as day 42 inches high for the handrail okay um, question 15 we're back to the public corridor piping again. When located in a public corridor or exit enclosure, gas piping shall not be installed in a return air plenum. Okay. What is a plenum? A plenum is air it is a source of air in the case of a return air plenum I mentioned briefly about how it is code that in any structure any building whether you're going to do it with the windows or if you can't do it with the windows you can't open a window like let's say with dealing with uh, more modern, more contemporary office buildings and the such. You're going to do it with a mechanical system, duct work. You're going to have to have a change of air every two hours. Whatever the size of the floor, building, room, etc. Any occupiable space. An occupiable space is a space where a human being is going to be there work, live, etc. An occupiable space. That space, the air in that space must be able, must be changed over every two hours. You know, your most basic way of doing it is open a window. But in buildings, more contemporary buildings, you're going to have to have mechanical systems that are going to have duct work to the outside air to pull air in. And then that air circulates, but then it's, that air is done. And remember, we've got to change it every two hours. That air gets sucked in to return piping. And that piping is exhaust. That, that air is then exhausted out through exhaust piping back to the outside air. So all that duct work is bringing air in, circulating air, exhausting air. So... A return air plenum is in the ductwork itself, in this entire system. Let's say we have our mechanical room, and then we have ductwork coming from outside, ductwork going to a room. We'll say this is a, this is one room. Ductwork coming back from the room to provide a circulation of air. And then exhaust air going back outside. We'll say this is the exhaust. This is the uh, intake. And all of this is outside air. This room doesn't have any windows. It's one of those fancy glass uh, office building, etc. This will say is the uh, mechanical room. Okay, air comes in. The air is circulated around. This is the um, return. We can say uh, air sent out. So we'll say this is the return. The supply. Okay. Every two hours, we have to have a changeover. Air comes in, sent to the room to circulate, comes back to the return. It makes this cycle. After a while, you know, this air is getting used up, so some of it is exhausted, and there's a replenishment of air. Okay, so you're always getting air in to replenish this cycle. Uh, air is being exhausted out to the outside air. 
that whole thing there, um, the whole thing there is to make sure you have a fresh change of air every two hours. Now, where does the plenum come in? Okay, a plenum is going to be in this system where, one, it is not an occupiable space. So, the room itself is not a plenum. People are in the room, they're breathing the air, they're occupying the room. You, the air there can't be considered a plenum. The room itself cannot be a plenum. The plenum would occur, say, in the drop ceiling. The air in the drop ceiling is a possible plenum. The drops, that space in the drop ceiling, it's not an occupiable space. People can't live or work in there. So that can be a plenum. That can act as an area where air is returning from other rooms. Um, you could have just within the ductwork itself, larger sections of ductwork that, that uh, resemble, that you could say is a room for the air to sit in so that it's air that can, pos that, uh, can be collected, waiting either to be used or to be exhausted. The return air plenum would be any section in the return air or any section of the building that's not occupiable where that air would be waiting to either be recirculated or waiting to be exhausted or waiting to be combined with new air. You know, the return air plenum could also simply be that's where the intake is going to supplement, add to, be mixed with the return air, be sent back into the room as the supply air to continue this cycle. Um, one interesting note um, about occupiable space. An occupiable space is any space that a human being can live, work in, etc. A non-occupiable space is a space where a human being is a, that it's not, you know, they're not supposed to be living there, uh, occupying that space there, etc. There is one exception, because a plenum cannot be an occupiable space. Unless, and this is in the mechanical code, I only bring it up since we're on the subject, it's not on the exam. This, I realize, is something that you really don't touch upon in your plumbing, gas fitting career, so don't worry about it. None of this is, none of this is on the exam. I'm simply explaining, they say return air plenum is, what in the world could that possibly be? It's part of the ductwork system, part of mechanical systems. You walk away with that, good enough. But since we're here, the mechanical room, the room where you're going to have your boiler, you're going to have uh, your furnace, the difference between the two, I'll get to in a second. But a plenum cannot be an occupiable space. It's simply air for the duct system. But a mechanical room, can both be a plenum for the furnace and also an occupiable space. It is the only area in the code where an occupiable space is also considered a plenum. It does double duty. So, the return air plenum we're going to find in the ductwork somewhere. The return air plenum, return air from a room is being mixed with intake fresh air from the outside getting ready to go back through again to circulate okay when located in a public corridor or exit enclosure gas piping shall not be installed in a return air plenum and like I said a return air plenum could simply be the space in a drop ceiling okay the uh, the actual ceiling the structural ceiling the drop ceiling that space in there, that can be the return air plenum. That can serve as a plenum. So, since, uh, to, since we're running the piping through the public corridor, we got to watch out for that. We could run it in a drop ceiling, but if that area in the drop ceiling happens to be serving as a return air plenum, or if within the drop ceiling, there is a huge ductwork structure that is a junction point for returning air, incoming air, exhaust air. However, if it's in your way, 
and it seems like a good idea to just drill drill a hole on both sides and just run the pipe through it no you're not allowed to do that okay it's like if it's in the way guess what you're gonna have to pipe around it you know for those of you who are if you've done a, a work your your journeyman apprentices on the high rises you know one of the one of the first rules the duck work the tin knocker trumps everybody okay the tin knocker his stuff never moves he puts his duck work up and then if it's in your way you got to pipe around it he's the one guy that never has to move you could be running something maybe it's in somebody's way you might have to move it someone's running something else it's in your way maybe they'll move it for you but the tin knocker moves for no one okay if it's in the way you got to work around it like every other trade okay all right so no gas piping no uh, gas piping in a public court or exit in enclosure except for the exceptions and then once you have those exceptions you still you're not going to run through you're not going to run it through the return air plenum because more than likely in the lobby in the first level there will be a plenum there will be some major mechanical thing there right 16 gas piping should not be installed in in or through a furnace plenum so once again the plenum in this case this one's a little easier to picture okay first of all furnace plenum What's the difference between a furnace and a boiler? A furnace is for a forced hot air system. If you want to say it this way, it's not, it's not technically correct, but it's easy to get the idea. A boiler heats up water to make steam or just plain old hot water in a hydronic system to send through the baseboard. A boiler heats up water for heat, for space heating, right? It's going to heat a space. A furnace is a boiler that heats up air for space heating because the air is going to be forced through ductwork, through registers or the gratings, and it's going to send the hot air into the spaces for heating. So the only difference is boiler, water, furnace, air. So if we're talking about a furnace, This is going to, let's say, uh, this is your furnace, okay? We're not going to have water in here. We're going to still have the gas burner, right? Or oil burner, whatever. It's, it's going to have some form of uh, com controlled combustion to provide the heat. The air is going to heat and it's going to go up first into this large plenum specifically built for the furnace it's the same thing as in a steam boiler you heat the water in the boiler it's going to go first into a big header right off the boiler then from the header we take the branches to all the steam rises but it's got to go first in the header it gives it a chance to build up, it gives it a chance to give off more of its moisture before it goes off. In a hydronic boiler, you can think of it as a manifold, okay? The boiler is going to, there's going to be a larger pipe just above the boiler, that manifold, and then from there, you can take your smaller pipes. A furnace has the same thing. A furnace, but now it's all ductwork. It's not piping, it's ductwork right on top of the boiler is its its own plenum its own large space where the air collects there before it starts going out to all the separate ductwork this is a plenum this is a large area a space of air it's a plenum it's a plenum for the furnace it kind of it it kind of almost you know it's like it kind of almost seems like, well, why would you need to tell somebody not to do that? It already seems like a bad idea. I mean, this is duct work sitting right on top of the furnace. It's for space heating. It's really, it's really freaking hot. 
you know, it's directly dealing with some sort of heat combustion, but we're going to drill a hole on each side and we're going to run our gas pipe through it. That doesn't, that just, that already, I mean, something's got to, you know, something's got to strike you as like, I'm not sure, maybe we should ask somebody before we do something like that. Yeah, but that's your furnace plenum. No gas piping through a furnace plenum. You're not going to put it through a return air plenum. If you're running corridor piping, you're not going to put it through a furnace plenum. And notice nothing else was mentioned in the question, which means you're just not going to do that, period. Okay? Okay. Um, question 17. Threaded fitting shall be no larger than 4 inches. This is a gas fitter exam, so it's understood well we're talking about a gas a gas system you know it's like they're not talking about a steam system so they didn't even need to feel specific they simply said thread of fitting shall be no larger than how many inches we've been going over and over it again no larger than four inches okay that's the largest size thread of fitting you can use in a gas system 18 all outdoor piping shall be elevated not less than three and one half inches above ground or roof surface. Three and one half inches. That's a funny number. Okay? Because when we were, when we were uh, supporting an appliance off the floor at grade, let's say we're at grade, okay, ground level. Grade, and grade implies, why are we always worried about grade? Well, grade implies that at the very least, at grade, when we're having situations with flooding, grade is where we're worried about getting flooded. Basements and cellars, well, they're below grade, so we kind of know that's going to be an issue, okay? At grade, the ground floor, grade, we're worried about... So we're worried about emergency flooding, excessive flooding. So we're worried about, you know, whatever flooding you're going to get, is it above enough so that we don't have to worry about corrosion or any damage from the water. Uh, it's why uh, 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 vent terminals, 18 inches above grade, we're not going to worry about. Should we have some kind of flooding condition that the water is going to get high enough? To go in there. Uh, same thing with outdoor piping. We're running outdoor piping. Whatever we're doing, it's got to be at least, you know, and obviously this is to the bottom of the pipe. Obviously, the bottom of the pipe cannot be any lower than three and a half inches off grade. Okay, it's got to be above the ground, above the floor, at least three and one half inches. So I say it's a little weird cause it only had to be three inches if we were at grade and we were supporting an appliance and, and we were using supports. The supports only have to lift it up three inches. And if we were hanging it, six inches. Here, outdoor piping shall be elevated three and a half inches above the ground or above the roof surface. Let's say we got a, a roof here, they don't specify whether it's flat or slanted, but a roof is a roof. It's got to be three and a half inches from the bottom of the pipe to the surface of the roof. You need three and a half inches in between the surface of the roof to the bottom of the pipe. Okay, so three and a half is an unusual number. It strikes out at me. And remember to keep that different from the three inches when we're just supporting indoors, some appliance indoors at grade, okay? Three inches, six inches for that. Three and a half inches outdoors, keyword outdoors, outdoors either at grade or on the roof. Three and a half inches. This question also, this is another one where guys came back and they knew the three and a half, but they still got it wrong because they said the way they worded it, okay? Um, 
For here, learning the exact wording of the code, and the exact wording of the code is not less than, but on the test you may have it phrased a little differently, like uh, no lower than, or at least as high as. Just get used to thinking that no matter what, whatever answer you pick, it's got to fit into the sentence such that in your mind's eye, there is at least three and a half inches of space between uh, outside grade or outside roof surface. Okay, if you don't have three and a half inches between that, if you got less, no good. If you have more, that's good, but you have to have at least three and a half. You can have four, you can have five, you have six, but you can't, you can't bring it lower. You can't bring it any closer than three and a half. Keep that in mind, because a lot of guys, they came back with complaints about questions on this particular point, saying that it wasn't necessarily knowing three and a half, it's more like the question was just phrased in a weird way, you know? Like it was easy to pick the wrong answer even though you knew what the right answer was. Uh, 19, purging is not required on four inch piping when less than Okay, once again, this is our table. Um, let's say for the sake of argument, because it's still real fresh, so maybe we're not so comfortable with the numbers or whatever. How about we pretend that we're still a little unsure. We want to make sure we don't know it. We don't know like that what the purging limit for four inches. How about we recreate the table, Sudoku style, and let that show us what the number is going to be. And once again, we review. So, when we had the table, we, dis we realized that our table, once again, is going to have a high and a low limit. Um, and we're going to pick a line that struck out at us, that, that hit us. Now, I remember, and um, it's the line I use when I start, and if the question had asked me about three inch piping, I immediately would have said 30, no problem, okay? I know that at three inch piping, when we're talking about purging, I know the number is 30. So, if we go past 30 on three inch, we gotta purge, I know that, okay? That's my solid number. Unfortunately, the question didn't ask for three, so we got to continue. Now, I remembered that if we wanted to fill in the, the low and the high limits, that the table was only worried about two and a half inch piping, and the largest piping we had was eight. I knew eight, you purge everything. So eight was everything, okay? Unfortunately, that's not what they're asking for. I knew at two and a half inch, it had to be more than 30. And I knew, I remembered that, you know, it stuck with a common distance number, 50. Okay? So, now let's fill in the Sudoku. The Sudoku is, well, what's the next size up? Code's not worried about half sizes in this case. So, four, five, and six. Okay? I remember, let's see, I remember, let's see, uh, I know after 30, actually we don't, we don't have a, I know this table didn't, uh, we don't have a, I'm going to cheat for a second because I don't want to throw us off, right, we don't have a five, we had four, we had six, okay? We had four and six. So, four, six, eight. And I know that somewhere in here, everything has to be less than 30. So, eight was everything. I'm still not sure about my four, but I know the six. I know the six being close to eight. I know it was 10. I remember 10. 10 was the lowest number we went to because that was our low limit, 50 and 10. Here's 30. 
There's only one number left. That's the number to answer the question. What was it? And I remember having a good feeling that somehow it was closer to the 10 and half of the 30. It was 15. 4 and 15. 15 looks good to me. All right. It'll look better to me. Well, once we establish if that's right. And two, you know, since we're still starting, by the time of the test, I've done this over and over again a million times that I don't even need to do the table anymore. Hopefully I know it like that. But if I have to do it, I'll have it. But I feel good with these numbers. I'm going to go with these numbers. I'm going to say that the 4 and the 15 is correct. Is it? Let's see. Purging is not required on 4-inch piping when less than 15 feet. Okay, so 15 feet is the number. Okay, purging is not required on 4-inch pipe when less than 15 feet. Okay, um, and in here, of course, also, I didn't even bother to, I mean, if I was really stuck, we could have just used the answer choices and we could have ruled out that 50 and 30, 3 already took 30. Six, 10 is for 6, so the only other answer choice would have been 15, okay? Question 20. Maximum length for a commercial cooking appliance flexible connect, 6 feet, okay? Maximum length for a space heater flexible connector, D. This is a trick question. Space heaters and water heaters shall be hard piped. Okay, those flexies are awesome. So convenient. Unfortunately, you don't really get to use them much places. One of the places you can use them, you know, the gas range. But I know they sell them in Home Depot. They have these flexible connections to really, I mean, really make a water heater uh, replacement like really quick and easy. And fortunately, in the confines of the city of New York, you're not allowed to use them. And you got to realize, just because a supply house or, you know, a big box store, a Home Depot, whatever, sells it, that doesn't necessarily mean you can use it. The onus, the burden is on you, the installer, to know whether or not you can use it. And... Those flexible connectors, yeah, they really are awesome. They, they, they will uh, cut your work in half. They look nice. They make do a nice job. But you, if this water heater is in the confines of the city of New York, you can't use them. You can buy them. You just not, you're just not allowed to use them. What, space heater or water heater? Hard piped. Hard piping. Boiler? hard pipe. So a uh, boiler falls under space heater. It's heating a uh, space. Regar um, you know, a furnace comes up and it is an appliance listed in the fuel gas code because a furnace can have uh, a gas burner. Okay? It can have an oil burner, but it can have a gas one. So a furnace is a space heater. A boiler is a space heater. A water heater is a water heater, but it could also be that it's a component of the boiler. The boiler itself has a coil that will heat the water. Okay. Uh, just so you know, and this separates the men from the boys, this separates the amateurs from the professionals. You as a plumber, as a gas fitter, you must realize there is no such thing as a hot water heater. The term makes no sense. It is redundant. You buy a water heater to do what? To take cold water, heat it up to make hot water. So if you say, hear someone saying a hot water heater, it's like, why would you buy something to heat hot water? It's already hot. And don't even let them make the art because now you're really separating the men from the boys, the amateurs from the professionals. Do not allow them to have the argument, well, I could pipe hot water into it and save the amount of fuel to heat the water. It's like, you could, and then you just have to pay it right back by the time, because now you just 
have the life of that unit because 